our planet's forces, perhaps none has greater power over us than water. For me, water's the most magical force on earth. The presence of water shapes, renews, and nourishes our planet. Oh my gosh, you get all that there. It's our planet's lifeblood. It pumps through it continuously, delivering vital ingredients for life. Ah, it's glorious.
you plant plants, they actually help prevent fertilizers and pesticides in runoff water going into our oceans. It actually cleans that. And for that matter, stop overusing pesticides. Um, Ethan Hobbs and I uh, use Scuba, which is obviously connected to water. <coughs> uh, the topics I'll be discussing are the history of scuba diving and the equipment required for scuba diving. So the scuba diving started around 270 BC, and people who dove underwater because they wanted to get pearls and sponges and they sell them to make a living. And some people used hollow reeds and airbags around 500 BC. Um, diving didn't really improve until about 322 BC when uh, Alexander Graham Bell used the diving bell um, on his siege of Tyre. It used the water pressure that was affecting the uh, diving bell, which gave him a full cavity of air to breathe. And then Da Vinci came along around the late 1400s and he designed a suit that used a air source that floated on the top and was connected by a long tube and connected to the mast. Um, Scuba really didn't, it didn't really um, improve for another hundred, couple hundred years. Um, in the early 1900s, Christian J. Lamberston created the first self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, which stands for scuba. Um, in 1943, Jack Cousteau created the Aqualung, which was the first open circuit um, diving equipment, which is seen right there. Um, the first organizations to ever um, supply a scuba certification course were YMCA, YMCA in 1959. Um, in the 1960s, a lot of training agencies formed because of the high, the high risk of um, divers getting hurt. And the National Association of Underwater Instructors, or NAU, um, was formed in 1960, and the Professional Association of Diving Instructors, or PADI, um, formed in 1966. Um, some important advances to the safety of scuba were implemented in the 1970s. Uh, the first commercially available dive computer, known as the Orca Edge, was introduced in 1993, the 50th anniversary of the invention of modern scuba diving celebrated all around the world, which started with Jack Cousteau's aqua launch. Um, this is a list of some essential gear needed for scuba diving, and other than this, this gear you need, you also need a buddy to dive with, your certification card, and a diving plan. This is actually a picture of me getting ready for a, a dive. <laughs> um, first is the mask, which is a the main function of it is to allow you to see underwater. And this is actually one of two different types of masks. It has two separate lenses. And then there's another type that has one conjoined lens. Next up is the snorkel. You kind of would wonder why you need a snorkel when you're underwater. Well, the main reason is to allow you to not waste your air that's in your cylinder while you're floating on the surface, and there's many different types of snorkels out there. It just depends on what the diver wants. Your fins are your main source of propulsion to move around underwater. And there's two different types of these also. There's ones with a cut in the middle of it, which um, provides a different type of propulsion, and ones that are just plain all the way through, and it just depends on what the diver wants. Your BCD is really important. <coughs> it allows you to control your buoyancy. So you can be floating on the surface as you're positively buoyant. to the bottom. And water underwater, you have to find an even medium between the two so you can float and swim freely. 
Uh, next up is the scuba cylinder, which is a big tank that holds all the pressurized air, a combination of oxygen and nitrogen. They come in many different shapes and sizes. Uh, they come in, and they are usually made of aluminum or steel. Steel is the stronger of the, of the two, and it just depends on what the diver wants. The next equipment is very important. It's the regulator. This allows for the pressurized air that's in the cylinder to be put at a breathable pressure. and only allows light air when the diver breathes in like this. negatively buoyant while you descend underwater and they can be in the form of a weight belt. Just a big weight. It's really heavy. Just be shown. Or they can be attached to your VCD and they both have emergency mechanisms to release them really fast in case of emergencies. Like this has a easy slip collapse. Gauges can be shown on your octopus, which contains your regulators. And this can show you your, your um, depth, and it also has a little meter that shows your maximum depth. The, PS, the PSI that's in your tank, and you should always have a dive watch to know how long you're under, underwater so you don't run out of air. Exposure suits are, uh, there's two different types. There's a wetsuit like this one that allows you to get wet. It'll trap water inside the liner and it will warm, your body will warm up to the water, which will warm you up eventually. Or there's the dry suit, which um, allows the state keeps you dry and it will also warm you up. And here's a video of us doing that. Meteorites are uh, composed of frozen dust and ice. So the ice on the meteorite scientists believe 
uh, fed the ocean when they collided with Earth. Okay. Any other questions? How long, how long have you even been um, scuba diving? Um, I've been certified for two years. Thank <laughs> you. 